What's up, everybody? It's your favorite first time for everything's favorite nerd. And today we are looking at the Bondi Model Kit Scout Biker Scout with uh, with speeder bike. I've never done one of these before, so you guys have to let me know. I, I went about it. So whenever I do reviews, I'm, I'm always thinking about what I would want to see, or I look around and I see what I feel like I want to look for in a review and don't get, and then try to adjust accordingly. So this is a first time for this. So what I'm looking for is a little feedback from you guys. We're gonna show the build. We're gonna show it sped up at about 20 times faster than real time. So it took about two hours to build and it takes about 10 minutes to watch. Then we're gonna review the figure. I guess what I'm looking for is if you guys want to see the build, let me know. Or if you don't care about the build, I'll won't do that in the future and I'll just review the model after it's done. But if you want to see it, let me know. And if you really don't feel like these are worthwhile watching at all, let me know and I can save myself some time in that regard as well. But I guess what I'm looking for is a little bit of feedback to let me know. Like when I watch these, I've looked at a couple and I've wanted to see the build and then I've wanted to see a review of the model. And so I've tried to kind of do both, but in order to do so, I've got to speed it up significantly. Maybe you just want to see the build. So what I'm looking for is some feedback. Let me know. With that being said, I'm, I'm probably, I'm not sure if I'm going to show him on the bike again. He, he can uh, sit on there and you can like adjust it. You got to mainly use the hips and it's a bit of a pain to work with to get him on there. But it is possible to do. Uh, and so anyway, I, I'm not going to be displaying him on the bike. I just wanted to show that it is possible. So here goes nothing. So I'm not sure if you guys have ever put together one of these kits. I'm going to assume that you have not, and I'm just going to play it sort of from that angle. They come on sprues, and sometimes the sprues are made up of the same plastic, and sometimes they're different types of plastic. Here we have, uh, like, the white is a more glossy plastic. That's my daughter's hand. It's actually pretty cool. Like my daughter will come down and help me put it together, and she'll find the pieces on the sprues, and... You know, and then we'll, it's just the two of us, so we're able to chit chat. If you're a parent, then you know, like sometimes it's difficult to get, uh, you know, to get that time to kind of just shoot the shoot the stuff, if you know what I'm saying. But anyway, uh, they come on different sprues, and like the white sprue is more of a glossy plastic. The black sprue is more of a flat plastic. It's not 100% flat, but it's more flat. And then they have like a couple softer plastic ones. There's like one gray soft plastic and there's one black soft plastic that's used for the joints. So they started off with like, you know, first you do the head. And the head, what was interesting is the visor is actually a black tinted translucent piece, which I thought was cool. Like it gives it like a, a real a real world style look to it. And it's just a separate piece on a sprue, which was it's interesting. You know, like that's a, that's a little bit of extra that you wouldn't necessarily expect. And then the torso is made up of like an upper torso and a lower torso all that has to kind of be independently sort of put together. This whole thing, like I think I'm going to state it in the intro, it took about two hours and uh, that's my, my phone continues to light up. Actually, it's like a little side note. It's pretty interesting. It's like you see like my, my phone is like always around, but like I don't like I just sort of read and keep up to it and like don't really don't really open up any notification or respond to anything until you know it gets it gets for real like if it's something that needs like an immediate response but it's like kind of always around a lot, a lot of times it's just nonsense but so uh now we're building the legs and building the the body is a lot of fun building the legs and arms is a little bit of a it's, it's it's a little bit of a pain because like you do one and then you have to repeat the same process over and over again. Like <clears throat> if if uh, people out there, some people will like they'll do both of them at the same time to kind of I don't know alleviate that that bit of a, a you know repetitive nature of it or monotonous nature of it. But and that one must have been important. But yeah, it's uh it just it, it's a little bit. I don't know. I don't know what the right word to say is. It's it's just a uh, it's boring. Like when you do the second, the first one's exciting and the second one is boring. Um, so yeah, I'm just down there listening to a podcast. I think that's brilliant idiots playing, uh, and that's my table, my my cool table table. Just as a heads up, and yeah, get yourself a pair of snips to help make clean cuts. I I use one that came with a 40k, like a Warhammer 40k box, but you know you don't need a 40k one. You can just get a regular pair of snips, and it works just fine. I don't know. It is interesting, like, <clears throat> I'm trying to think about other little nuanced things, like the, 
as you start to build it, you start to wonder like, how is some of this stuff going to work? And then you see how it works. Like the, the saddlebags on his belt that like clip onto both sides. And like, you're like, Oh, this looks like it's going to be kind of weak. And you worry about the plastic, but it's like, it's tolerance just right. Like if, if nothing else, Bondi knows how to create a successful product, regardless of what that product is. Like they're just sort of making quality products across the board. They have some that are obviously going to be better than others, but I don't think I've ever dealt with anything that was just a complete piece of junk. And there it is, uh, all, all built. It comes with a couple extra hands and stuff, like for, for holding the gun and then for holding the... Uh, that's the stand. I don't think I'd go over the stand in the review, so that's worth taking a look at. It's just a black square, and there's like a little clip that kind of grabs a hold of the, the outside of his foot and holds it with tension. And then I'm building the bike. And the bike was not as much fun to build. I've never been like a big model kit builder. It's been interesting to build the the, the figures because... You know, I, I like toys, obviously, but I, I've never been like a big spaceship kit or jet, jet planes or whatever people do with models or cars. And uh, the building the the speeder bike was not as much fun for me and you know, a little bit more grueling. But the, the the figure, I will tell you what is amazing about it is just how effective it is as a figure, even though it's a model kit. Like I, I, people have been telling me about these model kits forever and I finally got the opportunity to, to, to pick up a few and give them a shot. And I was just kind of blown away. So I try to um I, I try to, to to really get that across because I, I imagine there's a lot of people like me that have been like, eh, I don't know if that's for me. I, I want a well made figure. I don't really want to deal with a model kit. It's probably has limited range of motion, probably has, you know, you know, the the difference in the lack of pain will make for it. But they, they're they're pretty smart in the way they go about it and, and the articulation pretty much works just like a figure with a few exceptions, namely with the ankles and the shoulders, like just the, the aesthetics of them. But for the most part, it all works really well. So if if, if that is one of your hang-ups, you can kind of rest assured, at least with these Bondi ones, they work pretty much just like regular action figures. No issues. So, uh, yeah, so you, you built the front end, and then you kind of built the engine block, and then you kind of add the engine block and the front end to other pieces around it, and that's how the bike is built. Fairly straightforward. Some of these pieces, I will say, like uh, are small. Like they have smaller pegs and ports on the on the bike, not on the scalp, but on the bike itself. And for uh, a guy with the the kind of sausage Italian sausage fingers that I have, it was a bit challenging. I must admit to kind of get that to to make all the right pieces fit in the right spaces, if you know what I'm saying, so to speak. But yeah, it's already taking shape. Now, I don't think I show the entire build here. I think like I didn't show me putting together the base that this thing goes on. We'll go over it in the review. But my, my camera actually ran out of like space on it. And I think I had to, pl I had to plug my phone in because my phone's constantly dying. And every now and then when I heard like I, you know, my, my vibrate for a text is like a double beep. And that's something that I pay more attention to than a single beep. So I would go over and check, especially because my wife is upstairs and she was making dinner and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, I will also say real quick uh, as this kind of wraps up that there is a um there's a therapeutic element to this like that I think like I'm I'm not a very calm person. I'm extremely anxious. Like I'm I'm always kind of up and at them and move 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 and the the, the fact that this kind of makes me sit for a minute and just sort of concentrate on one thing at a time and build this step by step. And like, you know, but put on a podcast, put on some music, you know, talk to my kid, whatever, like there's something about it that is extremely therapeutic. And I almost enjoy that process uh, as much as I enjoy the, the final piece. And that should do it. All right. So let's get into the model itself. First of all, that pose is pretty awesome. But let's talk about the bike first. Now, I have a few of these model kits. I have the, the Scarif Trooper. I have the First Order Trooper. Like I have I have a few. But with that being said... Uh, the nice thing about like the, the Scarif Trooper, not the Scarif Trooper so much, but the First Order Trooper is that you don't need to paint it. The Scarif Trooper, it's like, eh, do I need to paint it? Do I not need to paint it? Like there's there's some that are 50-50. This one, I feel like definitely needs paint if you're planning on displaying it alongside your other speeder bikes. It's just too much plain plastic. Obviously, they don't paint it. It's how you're able to save, you know, money and they don't put it together. And that's how you're able to save money as well. But let's talk about the bike. So it really, really, really needs paint. We're going to compare it with the other two bikes. The 
Hasbro one. And you can see even Hasbro, you know, th sloppily threw a brush over this thing here and there. And then there's some shading in the brown. And then, of course, the SH Figuarts one, which is really, you know, superb. So I'm going to try to uh, line these up for you just so you can see. Like, there's heavy, it's subtle, but it's brilliant shading on the SH Figuarts one. And then, you know, all sorts of little doodads and stuff are painted on there. And then this one has like a more heavy handed approach to how it's painted, but it's still painted. And then this one looks very, very plain uh, between them. So it definitely needs paint if you're I feel like if you're planning on displaying it alongside the others. However, uh, it is a really great sculpt. It does have a couple features. For one, it plugs into the side of this tree. It has this nice base stand. We're going to talk about this piece here in a second. It has a nice base stand. Once again, I feel like if you painted this, added some flock to it, it would look even better. But what I do like is this uh, translucent piece of plastic that plugs into the side. And it does have a cover if you don't want to use this. And then plugs into this kind of tree stump so that you can create the illusion of uh, floating, which is cool. I dig that an awful lot. Uh, a lot of this stuff I was concerned about when looking at pictures like these really small pieces But this is a very flexible plastic. It's not like a stiff plastic like this. It's a it's a softer plastic So don't worry about that that works fine But like all these tubes here they need paint all the little buttons and doodads here on the top They all need paint desperately, you know, you probably should wash this etc um, There is also a feature that you can do where you can put like I have these ones on because I just want to have it sitting stationary But you can have another one on where they like they're aimed back where it looks like it's like, you know in use I guess and then uh, this stuff up here, all that desperately needs paint. So, so the paint really detracts from it, but the sculpt is beautiful. So if you have a little bit of skill with a paintbrush, you can probably put some really decent accents on this thing and really bring it to life. I'm thinking about letting my buddy Adam, he's a big airbrush fanatic. I'm thinking he's been begging me to, uh, to have a go at some of my, my stuff to kind of give it some depth. And I've, I've been reluctant because of this stuff is so pricey, but I think with this, I might let him take a, take a stab at it if he's still game uh, there's some other features these uh, all adjust a little bit like the handlebars moved ever so slightly and then the brakes move as well I think these are brakes maybe they're ignition I, what do I know about it? I've never driven a speeder bike uh, but all, all of it works really well the only issue I have are these fins they plug in here and they're supposed to sit off at like an angle and I've tried it both ways um, it seems like uh, let me see if I can show you. This is really worth talking about. It seems like, I don't know if you can see, but like on this side, there's like an angle on the on the outside, and this side is flat. So it seems like that this side should be facing the inside of the vehicle, and this side should be facing out. The problem that I have is I have a hard time getting them to stay on, for one, but even more so when they're facing the proper way. So what I have to end up doing is kind of putting them on backwards or inside out, and that kind of gives it more of an appropriate angle. Now, I'm not sure if that's just an issue with mine or if it's an issue across the board, but that is something that I found to be a little bit challenging. The rest of it, it pretty much works really well. All these hoses plug in independently, as you saw, and, and they... They're not that big of a deal. These little doodads up here, they were very challenging for these oven mitts of mine. But I'm sure for someone with a more dainty hand that they won't have an issue whatsoever. It surprisingly went together very easily. And I would say it's definitely one of the more challenging model kits I put together from Bondi. But even still, it went together fairly easily. And, and the instructions are great. So uh, with, with, for the most part, maybe a couple steps could have been a little bit better explained or shown. But for the most part, it's, it's a really well done piece. Now let's get to the Biker Scout. And I think he turned out really well. There's an issue I have with him. We'll talk about it when we get there. Um, but for the most part, he turns out really well. Now, he's light, you know, but but I've, I've felt lighter, so to speak, among uh, the model kits. But let's talk about it. So we have a double ball peg for the head, and the opening is not like a typical ball socket. It's more of like a rectangular slot, so you can get the head really op uh, up and then really far down. So that's nice. And then the swivel. I'd actually wouldn't mind seeing that um, uh, across the board on more figures in general, just that approach, because it really lets you get a great range out of the head. So really well done. As for the detailings, once again, this is a place where a little bit of paint won't hurt you uh, on this little front piece of the mask and then, you know, a lot of the black lines and such. But that's that's a little bit more challenging to do and you're going to need a little bit more of a steady hand. 
moving down the figures to the we'll talk about the the different types of plastic we have this black sort of flat plastic for the clothes and such that works fine and then we have a more glossy plastic for the armor and that works fine against it so i dig all that and then we have the different color for the bottom of the boots so i think that they they went about the different plastic approaches very very nicely that being said we have a butterfly joint in the shoulder that spins out and then you have a ball joint here that comes out to i believe it was uh, now yeah it's a hinge so and then this armor is also on a separate hinge so you can get that up you can oppose the armor and you can get the arm up to about there and then you can use the butterfly joint to about there and then you can swivel the arm around my my big complaint with these figures and it's not just this guy it's most of the model kits i've looked at from bondi is uh this gap here between the chest and the shoulders now posed on a shelf you know like this you know or at an angle you're never gonna notice it right but looking dead on it can become it can become a bit obvious uh and, and it does look a little inverted I, I i don't know why they can't put like a little cover piece that you would you know kind of holster around it uh but i'm i'm sure they know what they're doing they're a pretty smart company and they make a pretty terrific product so i'm sure they've thought of it i'm, I'm just wondering what the challenge is specifically Moving down the arm, we have a bicep swivel. That works fine. Double jointed elbow, not the prettiest, but not the ugliest either. I believe we've seen worst with a great range. A ball joint for the wrist, which uh, is very limited. That is one thing that's kind of a bummer. Accessory wise, we have this gun. It, it's it's clipped on between the two pieces, so I'm not going to take it off because I want him posed with it. But it does fit in there and it actually pegs into his holster. He also has two different hands. He has uh, two relaxed hands. Here's one. And then he has two like bike holding hands. So it's whatever option you want to go with. But they all are pieces that you had to put together. So like, you know, once you have the gun, it's kind of a pain to take it apart. It's not impossible, but it's just like, like ugh, something you don't want to have to deal with so we have a, a a ball joint for the upper torso and a ball joint for the lower torso it's not a double ball peg um, it's just two single ball pegs um, either way you get a swivel that's you know pretty much unhindered and then you get down a little bit and back a fair bit I would have liked for more of a down um, option but that's just not how they have it here these pieces are actually on sliding hinges so you can push them up a little bit or pull them down a little bit to help your sculpt as need be which is pretty cool these belt flaps here are both on pegs so they rotate up to there the legs are on uh ball joints as well and uh they're hinged they're drop down hinges so you can get the legs out to about there and then forward uh, without popping that thing out uh, the so to speak the uh the saddlebags forward and back to about there which is a pretty good range thigh swivel double jointed knee and then uh, ankle swivel tilt and rocker all that works really well you could use a little bit more of a tilt back but you have a great tilt front and the rocker is superb um, ankle covers wouldn't have hurt this thing but it's not terrible looking either and also a little bit of paint uh, dry brushing of brown dirt against the bottom of those boots will probably bring this thing to life a bit more so yeah, all in all, it's pretty well done. Let's compare it. I'm not taking my, my Hasbro Biker Scout off the bike because it's just obnoxious to deal with in general. But let's bring him out. And we'll bring the uh, the Figwarts one out. And it's it's pretty interesting to see them together. Now, I will say that, that both the Figwarts and the Bondi blow the Hasbro one out of the water in terms of a figure. In terms of a display piece, they all kind of, you know, they're all in the same ballpark, really, when you start putting them on a shelf and looking at how they juxtapose against one another. But uh, the Figwarts is definitely the superb piece, and it should be for the price point they're asking for it. Um, the sculpt is cleaner. The articulation works better and uh the the paint detailings you know definitely don't hurt it one bit uh also the the more flat blacks against the more glossy whites come out a little bit better as well but not a bad offering so here's the thing final thoughts wise i'm just going to kind of leave it at that do we recommend it absolutely we do it's definitely worth its value and between so this was let me look what it was real quick so i'm looking on amazon prime prime right now and it's at 45 dollars. i think the hasbro one was at 40 bucks and then this guy was like 150 or 180 or something ridiculous um this is definitely the best piece but i think for your money uh this is the better investment like it's it's pretty 
excellent for what it actually is. It's not as good as the Figuarts, uh, but it is significantly better than the Hasbro one, at least in sculpt and materials, and it's only $4 more. So I, I definitely recommend it. I think it's really a smart way to go. I think that if you're going to troop build, it's even the way to go. And the, the truth of the matter is, like we've always discussed here, is you can never have enough troopers. So buying them from different companies and getting to play with different molds and such, it, it really works to the benefit. I like that we have all these options now in terms of 112 scale figures. So I can get, you know, if I just get a Black Series Biker Scout and a Black, and a, uh, and a Bondi Model Kit Biker Scout and a SH Fig Wars Biker Scout and a Mayfex Biker Scout, I have four Biker Scouts in their all different so that's pretty beautiful you know just option wise when you look at it i've always hated how they wash these boots it's like a perfect ring around the bottom but it doesn't matter it's still a, that's still a decent figure but i think for your money that this is actually even between the fig warts that this is the best kind of bang for your buck now it will require a little bit of work on your part to get it completely up to par adding paint adding detailing there's some sticker sheets in there if you want to bother with that but uh, I think ultimately uh, it, it it's significantly it's it's not significantly worse than the Figuarts. That's you know three four times the price, and it's significantly better than the Hasbro. That's moderately the same price. So I think it's definitely the best investment of the three in terms of bang for your buck for your dollar. So I definitely recommend it. I hope this helps. I won't be doing skits with these because it's a lot of like it takes a lot of time to to do the the model kit part and then to speed it up and then do the voiceover and all that kind of stuff. So I won't be doing skits for these, but if you'd be interested in seeing me do more of these and if you want to see anything differently, slow down the build, whatever you want, not do the build at all, not do the figure at all, whatever it is, let me know. I will try to adjust if the statistics seem significant enough in either way. And until then, uh, until the next one, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching until next time. Take care.